Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and we made it all the way to Game Week 38 in this 5% series, which I'm very happy about. Not happy that we're at the end, but happy, happy that I managed to make these videos for 38 weeks. If you've been following from the start, then I think you probably should be in the top 5% now and hopefully doing all right in your mini leagues. So let's see what would have happened in Game Week 37 if you were following this and then what the options are for Game Week 38. Just so you know, this is the third time I've tried recording this section because I start going through it then I notice one of the numbers is wrong because I remember what the player actually got. Hopefully it's all right now. If it is wrong, apologies, but this is just to see kind of how things would have gone. It doesn't actually affect what you got, of course. You would have had one of these six goalkeepers playing. De Gea for 10, Rea for 7, Ramsdale for 2, Pope for 10, Kepa for 3, and Mesle who didn't play. That was an average of 6.4 for your keeper. I'm guessing you'd have had two of these defenders playing. Trent for one, Van Dyke for two, Trippier for nine, Chilwell, we've taken out of this system now, Shaw for 10, Gabriel for one, Zinchenko, we've also taken out. I think you've had two weeks to take both of those out, that's why they've now gone. That's an average of 9.2 for the two of these defenders you could have played you would have played potentially two of these defenders. Me for two, Estupinen for four, Aguard didn't play, Botman for eight, Pinnock for two, Castagna for six, Fafana for two, Canati for one. That was an average of 7.1. Two of these midfielders, Salah for five, Fernandez for 11, Saka for two, Madison for one, Grealish didn't play, Gakpo for two, Rashford for seven, Odegaard for two. So Grealish would have been disappointing for some managers because he had a double game week and he was presumably hung over the whole time. But anyway, the average for these midfielders was 8.6. Not great. For the next set of midfielders, Martinelli should have been taken out of the system by now. With that said, Gibbs White for 5, McAllister for 6, Matoma for 7, March we've taken out the system, Jensen for 2, Somerville didn't play. And we brought in Casemiro last week. And I know at least of two managers who did bring him in following his introduction. And he got 16. So that was nice. That was an average of 14.4 for these two midfielders. Now for the expensive strikers, you would possibly have played one of these. Haaland for 6. Kane for 7. Darwin, we've taken out the system. Jesus for 1. Tony, we've taken out the system. Yao Felix for 5. That's an average of 4.8. Of the cheaper forwards, I'm assuming you would have played one of these. Watkins for no points. Isaac for one. Ings for five. Wilson for two. Johnson for one. And Bremo for 16. And then we introduced three new forwards last week. These were Martial who scored eight. Alvarez who scored nine. And Enseco who scored eight. So the four players we introduced last week, who were all cheap to help you and able to do other moves... Or did all right, so that, that was very nice. That was an average of 5.6 for this forward. And the captains, you would hopefully have played one of these. That was Haaland for 6, Fernandes for 11, Rashford, who I said only make him captain if he's not got the little triangle saying he might be injured. He did have that, but I'll assume some of you may have played him anyway. He got 7, Matoma and McAllister, they got 7 and 6 each. So that was an average of 8.6 for your captain. So we add that score on because the captain's score got doubled. And the global average for game week 37 was 52 points. If you picked the worst possible 11 playing players from this system, you'd have got 25. The average looks like 64.7 and the most was 118. Now I checked the, play, the teams that I'm aware of following this system and... They all but one got a green arrow. The one that didn't get a green arrow was, I think, just one point from a green arrow. Uh, but they all seem to be from the high 60s. They all beat the average from the high 60s up to 90. So that was very nice. And they're all, all the ones that have been following it properly are all within the top 5%, which was our goal. 674 subscribers. Thank you very much. If you subscribe to this, thank you. And... Um, I'm intending to do this next season, but I guess we need to see. Now, transfer talk for game week 38. 
the four potential categories there's a very good buy a good buy okay to sell and a must sell and apart from players that you saw me take out of the system already i don't think there are any that you have to sell this week for the goalkeepers we have ramsdale de gea pope kepper raya and meslier i'd say ramsdale is a good buy and de gea is a good buy pope looks like he's injured so he's okay to sell and meslier doesn't seem to be playing so if your two keepers are Pope and Meslier you probably want to buy another keeper and De Gea and Ramsdale are both good choices but it depends what the rest of your team is and if you can bring one of those in or not if not then Kepa but he's a bit of a gamble because there's always a chance he's not going to get picked and Raya even though he's at home to Man City even when he lets in a goal or two he still seems to get an awful lot of save points so if you've got Pope and Meslier probably worth doing a keeper transfer otherwise there shouldn't be any real need to but if you want to you can of the defenders the more expensive defenders we have Trippier, Trent, Shaw, Van Dijk, Gabriel, Stones of these I'd say Trent is still a good buy Gabriel's a good buy Stones is okay to sell now Stones is a brilliant player and if we knew he was going to play 90 minutes he'd be worth playing but it's so difficult with Pep Roulette to know who's going to be playing. If you want to sell stones to buy a different defender, or maybe even a much cheaper defender, to facilitate something else, then that's all right. Of the cheaper defenders, we have Canate, Estupin and Botman, Fafana, me, Pinnock, Aguard and Castagna. Now there's none of these that I suggest are good buys, and there's none of these you have to sell. So the only reason really to buy one of these is if you're selling a more expensive defender to free up some cash. But the chances are you probably won't buy bother buying any of these. Of the midfielders, the more expensive midfielders, we have Salah, Fernandez, Grealish, Rashford, Saka, Gakpo, Odegaard and Madison. Of these, I'd say Salah is still a good buy, as is Fernandez, as is Rashford if you've not got him, as is Saka, as is Odegaard. Now, as long as you've got at least 11 players playing but hopefully more than that because of the rotation you probably don't want to be taking a hit to be bringing players in but if you want to it's your team that's fine if you're a typical team that's been following this you're well within the five percent so if you want to take a hit of minus four have a bit of fun in the last week or even a minus eight that's probably okay now Grealish like Stones brilliant player a little bit of a minute's risk it's all right to sell him if you want to do either free up some cash or free up some space. Of the cheaper midfielders, we have Casemiro, Mitoma, McAllister, Gibbs White, Jensen and Somerville. Of these, I'd say Casemiro is a good buy. He's not going to get another 16 probably. He's probably going to get two or three points, but he is very cheap. So he would free up some cash. So for example, if you were selling Grealish and brought in Casemiro, that's going to give you a little bit of cash you could upgrade a player somewhere else. And I'm also introducing Eze from Crystal Palace for 5.7 as a cheaper midfielder. He's at home this week, got a potentially quite nice fixture, so you may want to think about getting him to free up some cash or just to freshen things up a little bit. Of the expensive forwards, we have Haaland, Kane, Jesus and Felix. Of these, Kane is a good buy, but I'm not quite sure how you'd manage to bring him in, depending how much money you've got spare. Some of you may want to sell Haaland for Kane. There's a reasonable chance Kane's going to outscore Haaland this week. But then if he doesn't, or if Haaland does really well, lots of people captain Haaland, that might be enough to give you a bad score. So if you can get to Kane easily, that's fine. If you want to sell Haaland for him, all right. I know some people in the community are doing that. I probably wouldn't sell Haaland for Kane, but it's up to you. Hopefully you're still finished with the top 5% if you do do that. Felix is okay to sell. Um, Chelsea are just so dodgy at the moment. Of the cheaper forwards, we have Watkins, Isaac, Ings, Wilson, Johnson and Bremo, Martial, Alvarez and Seco. None of these are particularly great for buying, apart from you may want to buy one of these to release some funds so that you can buy somebody else somewhere else in your team. 
So on the bench, we now look at the bench. And if we get the bench order right, then your starting 11 will be right. So if your keepers, the first one you see that you have, that's the one that goes on your bench. So if you have Meslier, he goes on your bench. If you don't have him, but you have Raya, I'm suggesting he goes on your bench. And there's Pope. And in my defense, I put this together, this video. I put these slides together before we knew that Pope was injured. So there's a reasonable chance Pope's not even going to play anyway. Uh, and then it'd be Kepa and then De Gea, which means if you've got Ramsdale, he's playing. If you've got Ramsdale and De Gea, then De Gea's on your bench. Otherwise, De Gea will be playing, etc. I'm now going to show you 16 players. And this is my suggested benching order. The first player you see that you have goes to position three on your bench. The second player that I show you that you happen to have goes into position two. And the third player that you have would be position one. But of course, you can't put three defenders on the bench and you can't put three forwards on the bench. This is my suggested order. If you want to change it, that's fine. We are expecting there to be points on the bench, though, because this system just has some nice cheap players. Um, so I don't mind if you want to swap some of these things around, but this would be my suggestion. If you have Somerville, he's the, on your bench. Fafana, bench. Aguard, bench. Pinnock, bench. Assuming it's still not a fool. Jensen, bench. Me, bench. Botman, bench. Johnson, bench. If it's still not full, then Ings, bench. Felix on the bench. Canate on the bench. Gibbs, white on the bench. Then Stones, because he's a minutes risk. If we knew he was playing all 90 minutes, I'd want him playing. Castagna, home game to West Ham. Could well get a clean sheet. Estupinan, away to West Ham, but he could get an attacking return. Could get a clean sheet. But we have to accept there are good players on the bench. And finally, Grealish on the bench. Grealish on the bench. And regarding captains, these are kind of in no particular order. But Kane's a good person to be wearing the old mule hat for the final game week. And there'll be a lot of people captaining Kane this week. Fernandez is also a good choice at home to Fulham. Haaland away is a good choice. But we really don't know what's going to be happening with Man City regarding who's playing, who's getting rested. So... Personally, I think Haaland could get between 1 and 17 points. Kane is likely to get between about 4 and 8 or 9 points. So I'd say Kane's more likely to get more than 4 or 5 points. But I'd say Haaland's got a higher ceiling. And Fernandes, I'd say somewhere in between. And then Salah, playing against Southampton, almost certainly going to play. He's worth captaining. As is Rashford. So any of these five are fine to captain, and I'd suggest any of these other five are okay to vice captain. And if you haven't got two of these players, then I'd say put your vice captain hat on your most expensive player that's playing at home. And I forgot to say with the bench, if your bench isn't full, then I'd be tempted to choose players that are playing away to stick on your bench. Just choose one of them. And then after that, players at home stick on your bench if your bench still isn't full. So there we have it. The tips for game week 38, my suggestions for finishing in the top 5%. After Sunday's games, I do intend to put one more video out for this series for this season saying how this week went and how the season went and maybe some plans that I might do for next season if I do this again next season. If you did enjoy this series, please do let me know in the comments and maybe that will increase the chance of me doing it again next year. And next year we'll hopefully finish better than we did this year. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.